Hi there! Welcome to Palette University. Now, a few months ago, uh, there was a really big stir around the Pokemon community when this clip of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was revealed. Ever since Gen 1, people have been wondering, what exactly is Venusaur? Is it a toad or a frog? Is it a dinosaur? Some kind of weird lizard thing? Well, I'm here to tell you that you're all wrong, and I can prove it with one simple thing. But before I reveal Venusaur's true identity, let's learn some biology. Now, way back in the day, around 340-ish million years ago, uh, the first amniotes evolved. Now, amniotes are vertebrate animals that lay eggs that don't need to be in water because they have some kind of shell called an amnion around them, uh, which holds in water. Whereas if you look at the eggs of like a frog or salamander or other types of amphibians, they need to be in the water or in a moist environment for them to hatch it, or else they'll just die. Amniotes don't need to do this. Now when I say evolution, I mean it in the scientific sense, not really the Pokemon sense. Um, the Pokemon sense is much more like metamorphosis. If you think of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly, or since we're talking about frogs, uh, like a tadpole growing up into a frog, and it even happens in like stages, where it starts off as the tadpole, then it's a tadpole with legs, then it's a full-grown frog. So almost just like how Pokemon evolution works, uh, but it's actually called metamorphosis. Anyway, so almost right after the amniotes evolved, they split into two different groups called the diapsids and the synapsids. There's a lot, a lot of differences between diapsids and synapsids, but we're just gonna boil it down really quickly for you. Diapsids have two holes in their skull, uh, hence like the prefix di, and uh, synapses only have one. Diapsids went on to evolve into a huge number of things. Basically, it's every reptile that you can ever think of, plus birds, because birds are technically reptiles. Um, that's a whole, that's a whole different video topic. But anyway, um, and but the synapsids also made a large group of animals, but they all went extinct except for one group, which is mammals. However, they really didn't go straight to mammals overnight. You know, there's a lot of steps along the way from an early synapsid, you know, something like Dimetrodon, to something like you or I. One of these steps along the way that most people don't really think about is the evolution of the pinna. Now, if you don't know what that means, I don't really blame you. I didn't know what it was either until I took a class where, uh, like an anatomy class. Uh, the pinna is actually the cartilage part of your ear. And if you, if you look around at all sorts of different animals, only mammals have these. Our synapsid ancestors might have had them, but we don't really know. Uh, the only way that we know synapsids is through their fossils, which are bones that have been replaced by rocks. And soft parts like cartilage don't really get preserved all that much. It's mostly just bones, teeth, things like that that are hard. The earliest fossil evidence that we have for Pinna are from an animal called Spinalestes, which lived about 130 million years ago. However, the group that Spinalestes, you know, was part of uh, had been around for quite a long time, so it's very likely that its ancestors, also in that same group, uh, also had Pinna, which dated back to around 180 million years ago. So that's about the earliest that we can interpret that they actually existed without any kind of further evidence. But what does any of this have to do with Pokemon, you may ask? Well, I'll tell you. Well, everyone says Venusaur is a frog or some kind of toad, some kind of reptile, or there's also a lot of people who think it's some kind of dinosaur just because it has the word sore at the end, but the word sore means lizard. Like, the word dinosaur means terrible lizard. So, just because it has sore in it doesn't mean it's a dinosaur. Side tangent. Uh, when people named a lot of fossils back in the day, they didn't really know what they were. They were just kind of throwing stuff out. So there's actually a species of fossil whale called uh, Basilosaurus, I believe. Even, even though it's a whale, its name, its official scientific name, means King Lizard. But anyway, no, Venusaur is none of those things. Based on the fact that it has pinna, the, the plural of pinna, uh, is still reptile-like. So, in my professional opinion, Venusaur is not really anything <laughs> that anybody might have proposed. It's not a frog or toad, it's not a lizard, um, it's not a dinosaur, it's not even really a mammal. It's somewhere along the lines between mammals 
and early synapsids. Or another hypothesis could be that if we make a tree, as we do in cladistics, which is the science of figuring out how things are related, um, with early synapsids at the bottom, in real life, the rest of the synapsids just died and now there's just mammals. However, in the world of Pokemon, things could work completely different, where mammals evolved and then whatever Venusaur is evolved. It's definitely a synapsid, but it retained a lot of reptile-like aspects, such as the um, you know, wide, outspread gait, which you don't see in mammals, um, as well as just this general lumpiness and reptile-likeness. So I'm gonna flex here for a second and just cite the fact that uh, I got research about synapsids published by the Geological Society of America back in March. So I kinda know what I'm talking about with these group of animals, so fight me. Look at him. These other Pokemon have ears. Are they mammals too? No, no they're not. So just for example, I'll go over those three Pokemon that I threw up on screen there. Uh, firstly, Lapras and Slowbro. Now, if you look at the structure of what look like ears, they're basically just like a little swirly thing on either side of their head. But if you look, there's no hole that like goes down into its head like an actual ear would have. So that is one thing that leads me to believe that they're not really ears. And instead, what I think that these structures might be is some kind of thing to detect water movement, you know, while underwater. Because they're both water types. Um, Labrys is obviously fully aquatic. Slowbro somehow is semi-aquatic. I don't really know how Slowbro works because it doesn't have fins or anything. It doesn't really look adapted to swimming at all. But anyway, um, that's that's sort of what I think of it as. It's sort of like an ear that would work underwater just to sense like water flow, you know? And in Gliscor, well, Gl first of all, Gliscor is not even a vertebrate, so it definitely can't be a mammal. Um, probably what Gliscor has is that its exoskeleton just sort of evolved that shape to you know, redirect sound waves toward its head um, to better detect vibrations while it's flying around. Um, that's, you know, it's not any cartilage. Um, it looks like just like a hard part of its exoskeleton, like every, you know, uh, arthropod has. So Glisco is definitely not a mammal, and its ears are definitely not pinnae, like, this, like the same way Venusaurs are. Or if you just want to watch the world burn, you could just say that, heck it, it's Pokemon, they just put ears on a frog. But there you have it, a biologist's take on what Venusaur really is. Let me know what your thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, and if you have any other Pokemon science-based questions, let me know. Maybe I'll make a video about it. So that is all I have for you today. Uh, keep an eye out for our weekly lecture next Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Feel free to follow us on Twitter for updates at palette underscore you. And always remember, there's a time and place for everything.